Head to the second half, UMass leading by four. Now let's go to Andrea Joyce for a report. All right, Gus, John Calipari's message to his team about this game has been very simple all along. Make it hard for them. And now with Iverson heating up, they really want the players to work hard at wearing him down. They also feel like they need to do a better job handling the Georgetown pressure, and they got to get the ball inside to Camby more to get him more involved in the offense. Back to you guys. And thank you very much, Andrea. UMass, when leading at halftime, they are 24-0. But keep in mind, the last two tournament games for Georgetown, they trailed at halftime by three points and went on to win. Trailed by four now. Tipped up and in by Marcus Camby came to out. start the second half. Yeah, Georgetown came out and they acted as though they were in a 2-3 zone, and then they attacked the man with the basketball, and you could see that UMass was waiting for that play. Runner by Victor Page, way off the mark, and we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow in the favor of the Hoyas. Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner with you, and your feelings on the first half of play. Well, I thought that uh, UMass got a lot of support from uh, Dingle, and I thought Bright was very good for them. They were able to keep uh, Iverson taking some difficult shots, and when you do that, it takes Georgetown out of their flow because they're not sure where he's going to take shots from. Hook shot rejected by Marcus Camby. Here's Iverson, got a great look. Still can't get it to fall. The rejection is called a hand. They gave him a hand all over that ball. And that was not a half block, that was a whole block. Third block for Marcus Camby at 116 on the year. See, we talked about that he can make plays on the other end for you because it looked like Orfella was into his rhythm, could knock that one down, and Camby was just there, put it where it needed, where he felt it needed to go. It's Camby. So he comes get you on the other end. He had 10 shots in the first half and only made three of those. But you can see, as Andrew said, coming out in the second half, they're going to put the ball in his hands and let him make plays. Iverson went up with it, changed his shot. No foul call. Here's Harrington. And this time, it's a tie-up, and UMass will get it back. They're letting them play. They're letting the young players make the plays that need to be played. They're not calling tic-tac foul. You would think that would bode well for Georgetown, but it seems as you watch Edgar Padilla get his hand on the ball, that it hadn't bode not necessarily well for Georgetown, but definitely I think that that whole energy that Padilla brings and UMass has, it's voted much better for the Minutemen. Travieso can be on the baseline, and he's starting to heat up here in the second half. Marcus Camby, three for three. UMass on a 6-0 run. They now lead by 10. But they've been able to get in the ball where it can be more effective before the defense can get back, and you can get two people on it on the baseline, stepped out a little bit. Here's Iverson. Got the step. Taken off. 2-0 move. That's a three-pointer. See, Dingle and Bright have been chasing all of those, those plays down. Here's Bright. Great move. Oh, look at down to 10. Push the ball up before the defense gets back. You know that Georgetown wants to pressure you. If you get it down to the far end before the pressure ever gets there, then they really can't put a, a whole lot of pressure on you, and that's what... UMass has been doing. Padilla pushes it up. Dante is starting to go in. He gets there. He sees there's help. He waits to come down, knocks it off the glass. Right there. Nice little spin move. Up and under. Owl falls in. Then Jahidi White comes over. But they could give it to Owl because of the ball fake that got him out of position. Again, Dante Bright, Dana Dingle have been super here, I think, in this game. Dante Bright now has 10 points. He's got four rebounds, a block. Dana Dingle has five points. I, these guys, I, I like it. I mean, I like to see somebody else step up. When you're in a game like this, you need some help. UMass on an 8-0 run to start the second half of play. They now lead it. 46-34 with Dante Bright trying to complete the three-point play. He's a perfect 4-4 from the free-throw line on the season. On the game, rather. Marcus Camby goes to the bench knowing that he put forth a lot of efforts. John Calipari takes him out of the game. They can do it because Tyrone Weeks can play because Jahidi White's in the game and has not been a factor yet. Here's Iverson. Baseline cutter leaves it for White. And Jahidi White. 
picks up the foul inside. I, I think in order for Georgetown to get themselves back in this game and potentially get any kind of control, Allen Iverson has to become more of a passer. They are playing him to take shots, and he's now being taken some difficult shots. He's got to go draw the defense and find his teammates. Allen Iverson this season has had two 40-point games, one against Miami and also another in the preseason NIT against Arizona. Jahidi White knocking down the first free throw, shoots 47% from the free throw line. Big fella has really improved as the season's gone on. He's done very well. You know, speaking of Allen Iverson in his score, he's got 88 points here in just the three games he's played so far. So he can get numbers on the board. But his numbers, the way he tries to go get them now is taking some of his teammates out of it. And that's where I think he's got the first team. Javieso off the front of the rim. Here's Williams pushing it up the floor. And this is what UMass wants Georgetown to do, and that's play the half-court offense. They feel very comfortable with the Hoyas slowing the ball down. Because that's because UMass plays great defense. I mean, they, they're willing to take their chance that they can play better defense than you can play offense, and they have proven that they are a very sound yeah, defensive team. Yeah, yeah. Off shot there by Iverson, and Marcus Camby returns to the ball game. 7-13 to play in the second half. UMass leading Georgetown 47-35. The East Regional Final in Atlanta, Georgia. UMass beating Arkansas. And Georgetown taking care of Texas Tech. The winner to face Kentucky. Here's Camby, jump stop high off the glass. <laughs> Give it to your center, let him break the press, and then knock a little jump shot off the glass. 17 for Camby. 49-35. Here's Page trying to slide in, rejected by Bright, and recovered by Camby. Can't say it enough. Quietly, Dante Bright has been huge. Here's Padilla. Padilla being hounded by Drew Moore. This can be 12 on the shot clock. Can be sliding in. Soft one won't fall. Rebounded by Harrington. And after that big night of fella Harrington, quiet. Only one rebound. Well, I think that's one of the things that Allen Harrison has got to help him do is get him involved in the game. And that's the other way to get some offensive rebounds and try to get something going for yourself there. Harrington, one rebound and only two points, but he'll go to the line here. Well, Allen Iverson has the ball, and he takes the, the little shot right here. You see Othello Harrington give a little shove and get away with it, but you see Marcus can be out of position and tries to keep that shot from being put up by Othello Harrington, but fouls it. So Othello Harrington stepping to the free throw line. Came in as the high school player of the year out of Murrah High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Played with Ronnie Henderson. Also, Jesse Pate from Arkansas going to Murrah High School. Some feel that he hasn't lived up to some expectations, but if you talk to Coach Thompson, that's not the case at all. A fella has done the things that Coach Thompson wants him to do on the basketball court, and that's going to really translate at the next level. I think because he had to have some character to do it. When you bring a freshman in to take away a team that had ostensibly been that of Othello Harrington, then he doesn't say anything, and he stands up and does what he's supposed to do. He deserves credit for that. Here's Iverson with the steal. Iverson kicking out to Page. Page has been quiet. See, this is too much dribbling to get a basket. Yaya Ja. Rebound controlled by Norville. Enos Norville trying to bounce it off of Page. This, this, this play right now is, is got it going up to where Georgetown wants it, even though you got some sound guards up with the uh, Traviesa. <laughs> Love this play. Traviso. They love this play to get the Carmelo coming off that side. 12 points for Carmelo Travieso. 
He's four of nine from the three-point line, 52-36. UMass threatening to run away with it. Iverson knocked out of bounds. We'll stay down here. 14.56 left in the second half of play. Minutemen looking strong. Fifty-two thirty-six UMass, 14.56 to go in the second half. UMass, 6 of 9 from the field. Georgetown, 0 for 9. Yeah, and the part of the reason they're 0 for 9, that play there, you couldn't see if the ball went off of uh, Travieso's foot, but that was such great anticipation by Travieso to get over there and cut that area off of Allen Iverson. That's why UMass is in their position. Their offense has been okay, but their defense has been excellent. Here's Iverson off the front of the rim. Hustled down by Norville. See, Ivers is trying to do this by himself. I know they depend on him to score, but he's really going back. This, that's why, as a sophomore, you can see he's got some things to learn. This one you can't force. This team is too good you're playing against. Dana Dingle inside, and he draws a whistle. You know, he, he's, I, and I go back to Allen. I mean, and he's an outstanding player. And I, and I think, he, you know, with some time, he will be. You see, he's got 17. The team has 19. What he's got to do, the 17 is good, but get somebody else in the game. And, you know, there are some people that got, need to step up. Victor Page is one that scores normally for them. He hadn't been much of a factor. Othello hadn't been much of a factor. But Othello's in a dependent position. He depends on Victor Page, Allen Iverson, and the balance of the team to get him ball, the ball to make plays. Allen Iverson is one that can do that. Fourteen twenty-six, fifty-three twenty, fifty-three thirty-six. UMass is Damon Jackson. Now you got to remember, UMass has been in this before. They have been uh, in the Elite Eight before. They lost last year to uh, Oklahoma State in, in New Jersey. So they they have a bunch of players that know how to do this, but Georgetown does not. This is new to these guys. Last four years, UMass. There's a record, losing to Oklahoma State last year and failing to advance to the Final Four. 14 minutes away right now from New Jersey. They lead at 53-38. Played against Big Country at Oklahoma State, and Big Country was too big for them. And a foul inside of Bella Harrington going up, and he is pushed from behind by Enos Norville. And Norville, a sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina, will head to the sidelines. Third team foul called against the Minutemen. Calipari again doing a good job getting Enos Norville in just to give minutes so you can give a blow to Marcus Camby. Iverson in the corner. He'll get it back from Harrington. It's Iverson pulling up on the baseline. Ah! Too strong. Scramble for the ball, and a foul called against Iverson. I thought he had the ball. Allen is just trying to make plays. He goes after this one and get it. Look to me as though he had the ball, but Tyrone Weeks is just so strong. <laughs> he just threw him around, and the officials standing there felt that there was a foul to be called. But Weeks, again, we keep talking about the players. Marcus Camby has been good. The balance of this team, I think, has played great. Third foul on Allen Iverson. Here's Tyrone Weeks. Take a dribble and try to find a guard. See, the guards make themselves available. That's what those little plays don't go down in the stat book. But when a guard makes himself available when there's a guy that can't handle the ball, that's valuable. And Damon Jackson to the basket again. So the freshman from Alexandria, Virginia, now with four points. And UMass on top, 53-40, 13-09 players, Travieso. Pulling out, and he gets taken wiped out. out. <laughs> <laughs> Got taken out on that one. Bodies flying everywhere, Joseph Tuomu. Georgetown trying to create some tempo there that they can get after. You see Joseph Tuomu makes a play after that one. Now, Happens to be a bad play and a foul. And for Georgetown, number 42, Jerome Williams. Three, Carmelo Travieso really making Georgetown pay with his three-point shooting. 
53 to 40. There's Dante Bright inside, and it rattles in. If you read the papers here in Atlanta, Many of the riders had Georgetown favorite to win this ball game. A lot of people I talked to had Georgetown favorite. I'd like to come to these games and just let them be played out. You would think that Georgetown, because of the bodies they have, would just be too difficult to handle. But Marcus Camby just picked up his fourth foul going after that shot. But, but for Georgetown, you think the bodies would, would wear down UMass. They right now have gotten Marcus Camby. This fourth foul, we need to watch this. 12.34 to go. Fourth foul picked up by Marcus Camby. This is the point we've got to watch the game. This is what I said. you got to get him get it involved in the game, well, fellow Harrington. He does. Marcus Camby, I think, makes a good block on that one. But he's got to understand those kind of plays he can't afford to make because his team depends on it. So Othello Harrington headed to the free throw line. He's the best free throw shooter on the team at 74%. And if there is an Achilles heel for Coach Calipari's team, it's their depth. But all season long, especially over a four-game stretch, UMass, they're accustomed to playing without the big fella. So I think for teams to, to win championships, basically, if they get some adversity and get through it, it builds confidence. These are young people. They, they don't know what it's like to whether they can get through a tough time until you put them through it and they've gotten through the tough time having lost uh, Marcus Camby for those four games and they had some success with it so they can play without Matt, uh, Marcus Camby for more than the short stretches. Camby missed four games after collapsing prior to the St. Bonaventure game. He spent time in the UMass Medical Center as they ran tests and it turned out to be just a situation in which Camby fainted. He hadn't eaten all day prior to the ball game and he passed out here's iverson quick to the hole had it tied up on the way up and it goes off his knee having a tough time getting any kind of break on a call but he goes into traffic Allen iverson gets it umass does a good job see they all reach for the ball didn't feel that was a foul and so the officials don't make that and without that call it goes off Allen iverson's leg Live inside, Weeks got his man up in the air, the easy bucket. These guys play really well together. They, they really, they know how to play. There's there a lot of teams that have guys on the floor that don't have the understanding of if you're inside, give a little ball fake. If there's traffic, find your point guard. This team knows how to do those little things. So far, look at the front court scoring for UMass. Outscoring Georgetown's 36 to 11. That's a little bit because you got Allen Iverson. That skews that because Allen Iverson, such a good offensive player, is that you take the front court out of Georgetown team. But UMass has done a good job keeping it in here with Tyrone Weeks. Five years. Georgetown in trouble. Trail it. 57-41 last night. The second number one seed going down. First Purdue, now Connecticut. As they lost to Mississippi State and Syracuse, however, keeping their season alive. And it's been tough on the Big East so far in the 90s. No appearances in the Final Four. Well, they've got a tough go here with Georgetown playing this UMass team. And, and, you know, Syracuse has got to come to play in order to give themselves a chance as well. But you know the, the Syracuse game. The, I'm telling you, the play with John Wallace was was a great, was an excellent play for for a big man to be able to take that the length of the court. He and he looked up and knew how much time was on the clock. I mean, it, it's good to see you know the young people when they they play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Here's Harrington, and he's fouled on the floor. Othello Harrington, when they get him to ball, Quinn, he's able to make some things happen. Maybe the ball doesn't go into the basket, but he's drawing fouls inside. Well, more so now with Marcus Camby with four fouls, they, they can get some things done. Here's Harrington again. They're going to go back to him. Turn it with the left hand. 
and he got the soft one to go in. Well, that's what the timeout gave John Thompson a chance to do to tell his team, look, if we're going to play, play smart, we need to throw the ball inside. And because the other thing they have is Allen Everson is out of the game, so Othello becomes their primary offensive weapon. And we'll get a holding foul called against Victor Page as he hangs on to Dana Dingle. You see, they get the ball into Othello. He gets to turn the way he likes to turn, where he can come with that little left hand. Just not enough height from Weeks to be able to stop that. Marcus Camby back in the ball game, playing with four fouls. All right, we got 10.39 to go here. This is where Georgetown, you'll, you'll find out if they understand how to play. You've got to go after it. Great pass to Camby! Height. You don't get tired if you're seven feet tall. Even when you're tired, you don't shrink. That play, though, created by Carmelo Travieso as he beat his man off the dribble. The guards are so good. Look, Travieso's been scoring. He sees Yaya Ja and Othello Harrington coming. Camley didn't even have to jump. The pass was right there where he needed to be, right where he could catch it and put it up, looking to complete the three-point play. Totally different second half for Marcus Camby. He's five of six from the field in the second half was three of ten from the field in the first half, and he'll quickly go out of the game. Great. This is a, this was great. Offensively, was able to get him in the, back in the game to get the points the total to go back up so you can absolutely get some control here. Good play. Great coaching there with John Calipari. 60-43 UMass. And nobody thought that this game would end up like this. But right now, Othello Harrington showing the entire arsenal as he puts it on the floor and goes to the hole, picks up the foul. You see, they cleared the whole left side out for him, so there's no help. And then coming over, Padilla gets called for the foul. Norville couldn't stop him. Marcus Canby on the bench, picked up his fourth foul at 12.34 of the second half. So, Bella Harrington starting to... They're putting up, look, they're going to try to get Canby back in the game. Because where he's, this is where a coach knows his player. John Calipari feels that offensively, there's little chance that Marcus Camby will get an offensive foul. He may get one trying to block a shot, but he doesn't feel that he'll get one trying to do something offensively, so he puts him back in with four. Harrington with nine points now, 60-46. They'll get trapped there. Georgetown will always trap you if you get in that position. And a foul. That's Iverson trying to go for the steal. He picks up his four. Well, that also allows Marcus Camby or John Calipari to make a decision. Does you want to keep Marcus Camby in the game or take him out? Allen Iverson is one of the steal leaders in the country. He, can, he can't help his instincts. He puts his hand in there and is not able to get it because Dana Dingo stinks, he takes it fast, and that's where Allen Iverson, he's, he's maturing in that regard and understanding, look, if you're going to go for that one, you better be darn sure you'll get it. Otherwise, Coach Thompson has to take him out of the game. He sits down, and now you look to go to Othello Harrington to get offense. You lose one of your offensive weapons. So on the floor right now for Georgetown, Victor Page, Joseph Tuomu, Othello Harrington, Yaya Ja, and freshman Damon Jackson. So we have three freshmen on the floor for Georgetown and for UMass, Edgar Padilla, Dana Dingle, Carmelo Travieso, Tyrone Weeks, and Dante Bright. Now, at this stage of the game, I, John Calipari just told Edgar Padilla, look, we've got three timeouts and a 20. If, any, if there are any problems, and that, that's how he keeps in touch with his guards, and his guards will be able to make some good decisions given that kind of knowledge. Lobbed inside to Harrington, no call on the play. Here's Padilla, guarded by Tuomu. Draws a double team, and a whistle and a foul. Georgetown making substitutions, getting Jerome Williams in, hoping they can get a little more help, take a fellow out, and Allen Iverson is coming back in. So Joseph Tuomo picks up the foul. Allen Iverson coming in with four fouls. Had 17 points in the first half. And he still has 17. He's not scored in the second half, and we played over 10 minutes. Saw Victor Page sit down. Victor Page is a guy you can normally count on to get some numbers. Hasn't been able to do anything offensively here. Putting a, puts, that puts a lot of pressure on the balance of the team. But you know what? That's a, that's a freshman. 
I mean, that's what you get out of them. There's some days they come big for you, but their freshmen, this, this whole process can be a little much for them at times, and I think that's part of what Victor Page is dealing with this afternoon, in addition to some good defense by UMass. Page had 17 points against Texas Tech. Here's Iverson. Travieso, what a job he's done sliding with Iverson this evening. Trying to stay in front of the All-American. Iverson on the baseline. The footwork by Padilla and Travieso is excellent. And a steal. Knocked away from Jerome Williams. Squirts out to Edgar Padilla. 9.08 to play. 63-46. UMass trying to advance to the final four in the school's history. Ahead, Iverson. Cutting to the basket. Loose ball picked up by Padilla, but he travels. He was on the ground with the ball, and he stepped, got up off the ground with it. That's traveling. You, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Allen Iverson pushes the ball up. He gets there, tries to draw a foul, and actually gets himself off balance there a little bit. And I say to you again, he, he is, it looks as though he is trying to do too much, almost like he did his first year in school. He needs to bring it back a little bit. Understand, get it stopping and going. Your changing direction is your biggest advantage when you have the quickness of Allen Iverson. And there he goes with the three-pointer. Iverson got 20 points. First field goal of the second half. Now, earlier today, Rick Pitino and his Kentucky Wildcats just rolling over Wake Forest. 83 to 63. They'll face the winner and can't say enough about Kentucky and what they've done in the tournament thus far after that scare in the, what, the first eight minutes in the first round for the Wildcats. That was about it. They played the game against uh, at the SEC tournament in the final against Mississippi State, who uh, had a, a very sound game in beating Connecticut. And since then, Kentucky seems to have been much more focused on what it was they were trying to get accomplished. Kentucky against San Jose State in the first round allowed San Jose State to play with them. You know, but I don't know how much of that was was not some of the the residual from having gotten beat by Mississippi State. Just took them a while to settle, but you know, get themselves together again, get right it. But I suspect everybody has played them so far. We haven't had a close game thus far. Beating Virginia Tech, Utah. And we go inside Georgetown, trying to hang tough. And they'll go to the three point, the free throw line for the three point play. You can't, Harrington. you can't let anybody get in this position, not a, including Othello Harrington. But Dia tries to get there to help, and Weeks is just not strong enough or tall enough to keep Othello from getting to that left hand and getting it knocked down. 64-51. And Harrington, now three of six from the free throw line, 11 points. Doesn't help your, your calls at all when your best foul shooter, who's a 70% foul shooter, gets, uh, doesn't give you the three of six. Dante Bright gets it pinned on the backboard by Harrington. Here's Williams, tried to needle inside to Bubakar Isle, and he can't handle the pass. Because he was in between as to what pass it should be. It should have been a bounce pass, and he ended up throwing it as a, two, as a chest pass, and that's why he threw it too hard. So here's Edgar Perdia. Guarded by Allen Iverson. Padilla doing a great job controlling the tempo offensively for UMass. Dante Bright on the hop inside. Tapped up. Here's Dingle, left hand, and he's fouled. But what about the play about with Bright? I mean, the presence of mind to tip that ball back to Dana Dingle. I mean, you said this guy we were talking about, this is a man. Dante Wright is, is a guy that comes with great strength. You can, I mean, and I don't mean physical strength. You can just tell there's a toughness about him because he's been going to get tough rebounds, making tough, intelligent plays. Played at Dunbar High School was the, was on the first team. All-American squad as a senior in high school, playing with Keith Booth, who now plays for Maryland. At Dunbar. Was recruited by John Thompson at Georgetown. Here's Dante Bright. Great players coming out of Baltimore. 
Yeah, Dunbar has just put out some great players. Reggie Williams is now with the uh, Denver Nuggets. 7.40 to go, 65-51, UMass. A tradition, huh? Seven forty remaining. Sixty five to fifty one. And so far, your tournament summary the SEC eleven and two, two teams remaining. And the amazing fact is that the SEC had only one team in the top 25 at the end of the regular season, and that was Kentucky. Ronnie White on the follow, can't get it. Ahead, Travieso, and he is fouled. You're not going to, Travieso and Padilla, I'm telling you, these kids are tough. It, 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 they get the ball out to him. And then from there, it's just a fight. Tyrone Weeks comes up with it. And watch. Bubakai Al tries to get it. I mean, he takes it. He got hit. Bubakai Al said, you all right? And he just kind of shook his head. Yes, I'm all right. Hello, Travieso I mean, with the line shooting got, two. Travieso and Padilla, they've got an interesting opportunity. They, they're going to try out to play on the Puerto Rican uh, Olympic team, which would be something that, you know, obviously would, is right here in Atlanta. So they're both looking forward to that. And I would say they've got a very good chance of making that. Padilla, Travieso, both born on May 9th, 1975 in Puerto Rico. They're roommates on the road, and when, as you pointed out, they've developed that great relationship off the court as best friends, and you can see how that translates on the, that translates on the floor. They are so much in sync with each other. You know, I don't think there's there's any question about when you, you have good teams, you've got to have a tremendous amount of respect and a love and a commitment for one another. As you see, five seconds with good defense when he missed Norwood. You've got to care for one another and be very, very emotional about how you feel about one another. And when you do that, when a guy makes a move, you know what his emotions are, and so you get through that knowing what he's thinking. 7.05 left to play. Time out, Hoyers. And now follow me. This Ranger. 7.04 to play. 67-51 UMass. This Marcus Camby keeping it up high. Finds Dingle cross court and he calmly gets it back to Padilla. The Travieso open look. You see how they get it to the, to the point guard quickly? I mean, that, that is a very important point when you get a press. So you can get someone in control of it. Dingle got it right to Padilla, who got it to the open Travieso. For that, you get it to your decision maker. Carmelo Travieso with 17 points. UMass ahead, 70-51. Here's Victor Page, but very quiet. Has it knocked away. Padilla ahead to his roommate. Travieso. Nice look to Dingle. <laughs> the fellas were looking for that one. They were standing up on the bench right now looking to get that play. I mean, again, looking to just get there. Nice hand across the top. Travieso gets it. Padilla sees him. Knowing he's in trouble, Travieso looks for a man. It's Dingle that bails him out and almost gets the three-point play. Defense again. It's what wins championships. It is the thing that takes the most commitment from a team in terms of your, your to, the commitment to one another. You have to protect one another. And that's one of the things UMass has done repeatedly. John Calipari gets credit for doing that, getting his team to that position. Seventy-one, fifty-one. UMass with their biggest lead of the game, twenty points. Six eleven, standing in the way of a trip to New Jersey. And there's Padilla with the quick hands. How many times have we called his name? He's got four steals. This evening, Travieso, quick release. <laughs> oh, he was feeling real good about that shot. It's Dante Bright getting it to Padilla. Minute men making all the right plays against the Hoyas. UMass came into this game winning their last six contests against Big East opponents. Here's Dante Bright inside. Short ahead to Iverson. 
But Gus, they, they put a schedule together that, that has made this team tough enough to do this. I mean, they played Temple, Georgia Tech, Syracuse, Maryland, Louisville. They had to play in their conference, uh, George, Washington, St. Joe, who's in the final four of the NIT. John Calipari put the schedule together. You can see what he did is done against the top 25 schools in the country. Kentucky, they have played a good schedule, and because of it, his team is seasoned at making plays in tough situations. So Allen Iverson stepping to the free throw line, one and one. Iverson, a sophomore, two more years to play here at Georgetown, 21 points, make it 22. Here's Dingle. Padilla sliding through, finds Dante Bright leaning in, and that's goaltending. Padilla makes the play. You saw him, he jumped in the air, which you teach a player's not to do, was going to go to baseline with it, and then the defender jumped over, so he threw it right in the center where it needed to go. You know I love good guard play. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing like it. We've said many times over, guards are essentially successful tournament team and that's why UMass is in this position their guards are very good but you also look at UMass and when you talk about them breaking the pressure not only their guards Travieso and Padilla but you look Dante Bright can bring the ball up the floor Dana Dingle can also bring the ball up the floor and it's worked UMass with the 20-point lead you got the They refuse to lose. That's the case right now. UMass on top of Georgetown, 73 to 53. And Marcus Canby and company picking up a whole lot of honors. Player of the year, coach of the year. Two players on the first team, Dante Bright and Marcus Canby. They, that team has put some players on, on, the, on all kinds of honors list, Marcus Canby being one of them. They've won the conference tournament and title for the conference title five years in a row. The team that wins the most times in a row for any conference is UCLA 13 times. But that's a pretty good deal if you look at a team that's just since 1992 got their first NCAA bid for almost 30 years to say that they've come a long way in this program and John Calipari has built it from where people didn't know who UMass was to now it's one of the most one of the most recognized names in college basketball. Coach Calipari, a former assistant for Larry Brown at Kansas. Now in his eighth year here at UMass, can be changing his shot inside, rebounded by Damon Jackson. Here's Jackson straight to the cup. It's knocked out of bounds. We'll stay on this end. You notice how many times somebody's going to the basket and there's some hands on the basketball? So I've always thought that was a, a good trait to have with guys that will get out and, and be able to get in position. If you move your feet and you're just getting your hands around the ball, a lot of times you can get your hands on it. If the officials are calling those fouls across the top of the hands, then you just back off of it. Now, is that something that's taught? No, I, I think it's yeah. I think it's taught. I think they've always they've been taught that. I think it's it's part of Travis, but particularly Padilla, it's part of his makeup. I've yet to see him go around the ball where he doesn't try to get his hands on. Damon Jackson at the line, shooting one and one. 73 to 53, under five minutes to play in the East Regional Final. Georgetown and UMass. Now out west tomorrow, big matchup between the second-seeded Jayhawks and third-seeded, rather, and Syracuse. Kansas beating Arizona last night. That, that, that game will be interesting. Uh, Jock Vaughn is, is going to have to be able to create the tempo, get it up a little bit, if you will, for Kansas because the number of players they have You've got to find a way to get them involved, and you see the quick, smart timeout by Dante Bright. 20 second timeout. Time All of a sudden, just to try to regroup momentarily, Dante Bright. See those smart? Those are the kind of plays we're talking about. Bright plays. So looking down the road a bit, 
with 419 remaining and up 73 to 55. UMass looks to be on their way to the final four. And tomorrow in the Southeast, Mississippi State and Cincinnati. Mississippi State, the kind of team that you never know who's going to show up, but recently against Princeton and UConn, they played some great basketball. Well, I think the first game we saw against uh, VCU, that they were still having some residual effects from having played and beaten Kentucky. I think since then, they, they against Princeton, they settled down. And all of a sudden, starting to be more patient and getting the ball to Eric Dampier. And Eric Dampier was too much for Connecticut to handle. So that's what's got to happen again. Is Campy to turn around, jumper on the baseline. Rebounded by Harrington. And a steal. Padilla leaves it. Dante Bright. Damon Jackson hauls it down. The, the steal came because Dante Bright got his hand on the ball. It's 2 0, move 340 on the clock. Allen Iverson. He's got to go to work now. He, he can create some shots for himself. He's going to have to. Padilla getting his hand on it again. <laughs> I tell you what, Edgar Padilla. Now tonight on CBS After Basketball, it's Dave's World, followed by Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and Walker, Texas Ranger. Touched by an angel, preempted because of the length of this ball game. Edgar Padilla at the line, shooting two. 73-55, Edgar Padilla back at the free throw line. 3.31 to go, and as I was mentioning, Quinn, looking down the road a bit, Final Four, UMass and Kentucky. They'll square off once again. <laughs> How do you see that? Well, they'll square off once again. Rick Pitino and, and John Calipari have their history. Uh, John Calipari has his job because Rick uh, was a part of the negotiation, the helping to get uh, John Calipari to take that job. I, what I see is that there's going to be a lot of pressure on Kentucky to get these guards to turn the ball over. That's Kentucky's strength. They have a lot of people. They force you to turn it over. They took Wake Forest out of the game, or they took... Uh, 22 for Campy. Kentucky took uh, Tim Duncan out of the game because they, they can pressure so much. Now, I suspect that that's the same kind of thing they're going to try to do with Marcus Camby. Take him out of the game by making it 94 feet, and that's with a challenge for UMass. On November 28th, UMass beat Kentucky 92 to 82, their first game of the season for UMass. They will meet in New Jersey, and Marcus Camby playing above the rim here. Well, they, they find him, you know, just a little eye contact. He gets near the hoop, and they find him, and he gets a little bit of a reaction. And in that game you were talking about where UMass beat Kentucky, Marcus Camby had 32 points and nine boards. So I'm sure Kentucky, as well as UMass, is looking forward to that rematch. Dante Bright. 16 points, seven rebounds for him. And he is the most consistent player on the squad. You know that Dante is going to get his points and contribute on the glass. Averages 14 on the season. You know, Kentucky has made a change since then, though. You know, they have Tony Delt playing point guard. They, you know, they play, they'll play Mercer there sometimes. They'll, you know, get Anthony F. They'll, they'll make changes. They've made changes in that position. That was the one thing that Rick Pitino was not happy with with his team there was what he was getting out of the point guard position. He put Tony Delt back to his natural two-guard position. And I think it's really helped Kentucky. It's Padilla. Taking off inside off the glass. He can't get it to go. And a whistle and foul. Let's go back to November 28th and the first game of the season for UMass. Marcus can be just all over the basketball court. Yeah, he was, he's always going to be active. They able to get out there to finish the steal. But that's the kind of thing that you obviously see puts a good smile on John Calipari's face, but he'll get a chance with that different do. <laughs> he looks younger in that picture for some reason. Hey, a season like this with what he's been through will make you age some. Kentucky leads the series three to one. UMass. They're revving up the bus for New Jersey. Suppose. UMass with the big lead. Now, when Marcus Camby stayed in the UMass Medical Center 
after passing out before the game with St. Bonaventure, he developed a very special friendship with a young man named Anthony Tambaleo. Uh, two weeks ago, young Anthony passed after a tough fight with Lupus, and according to Anthony's uncle, Robert, Marcus brought a lot of joy to Anthony's final days just being there for the young man and spending time with him. And for Marcus, his friendship with Anthony has had a profound effect on his life. According to Marcus, win or lose, this season is already a success because of the relationship he's developed with Anthony. Anthony's death has really had an effect on Marcus, and it's helped him put his basketball career and life as well in perspective. Well, it's good to see that, that Marcus Camby had, had taken out some time, but, you know, it says something about the depth of the young man for him to take the time to, to try to be, you know, give some consolation to a young man that needed it. Basket by Jerome Williams. Here's Padilla, a minute, 40 seconds remaining. See, look how hard he is to, to trap, Padilla. I mean, and Georgetown is one of the best trapping teams in, in basketball, but they, they have a tough time ever being able to get Padilla into the trap position. And they're just going to, you know, run the clock down as much as you can. And when you got sharp guards, you can do that. Stolen by Jackson, and he comes down. Looks like he may have twisted his left ankle. Travieso recovers the ball and knocks down the jump shot. And Damon Jackson is in a lot of pain right now freshman from T.C. Williams High School. Well, he jumps up to go to get the ball, and I think as he jumped up, Marcus Camby may have come in position, and, and just in trying to get the ball, you see Marcus Camby actually didn't move his foot at all, and you just see he, he stepped on it, and that left his foot. He just goes down. You can see he just he lost all of the support in it. And for a guy who was down, he has gotten back up and is running off the court. But that, you know what that grimace is? That's a young man, and you see it a lot. Young, when you, if you haven't been hurt before, that initial shock of going down with something like that. Scares you. It scares you, and that's what happened to him. It scared him as Marcus Canby goes out. So Marcus Canby, 22 points, leaves the ball game. First team All-American. The UMass Minutemen are all set to take on the Wildcats from Kentucky. A minute, six seconds stands between them and a trip to the Final Four. And so far, this is how they match up in the Final Four, UMass and Kentucky. And the winner of Mississippi State and Cincinnati and the winner of Syracuse and Kansas. There's nothing like that feeling that the first time you get the rush of going to the final four. You get the big dance, you get to show everybody your wares, your little steps. This is a, a, a this is a big moment for these young men because for most of them, this will be the, the biggest athletic uh, feat that they've ever had in their life, just to participate in it. I can assure you that UMass, like all of the other four teams right now, Kentucky and UMass, have nothing but winning that in their mind. But this is a, this is a one of those feelings gives you chill. Brings back memories. <laughs> Good memories. <laughs> 1976, Quinn Buckner and the Indiana Hoosiers going on to beat Michigan. And Allen Iverson takes a seat at 17 points in the first half and only four in the second half. One of ten from the field in the second half of play. One minute to play. And that's the other Padilla. <laughs> Who, when he came, when uh, Edgar Padilla came to school, Goodell really translated for him because uh, Edgar couldn't speak English. So he, there was some advantage of having him. Now he's got a basket in an uh, Elite Eight game, so you know the fellas can go back and talk about that. Forty-one point one seconds remaining, eighty-four to sixty-two. Allen Iverson sitting and thinking about the future, along with Victor Page, who's also in his first year. Plenty of time for both of those young men. And a good learning lesson of what it, when you put a team together. I think there are a lot of things that they learn. I think Iverson learned 
that when you've got people coming at you with that kind of strength, that he, he needs to work on his strength because he has the skill. On the break. <laughs> the bitch is standing up. <laughs> Substitutes in the ball game right now for both teams. Ball kept alive and finally recovered there by Dan Cottrell. 18 seconds remaining. And the UMass Minutemen. Minutemen improved to 35 and 1 on the season. And their first Final Four. The first Final Four in the history of the program. Now that's got to make one man proud of Julius Irving. And that's it. Celebrating in Amherst because UMass has gone on to beat Georgetown in the East, 86 to 62. The Chevrolet players of the game are from Georgetown, Allen Iverson, 23 points, and from UMass, those great guards, Edgar Padilla and Carmelo Travieso, total 28 points and 10 assists. Coming up, we'll head back to New York where Pat O'Brien is standing by for Andrea Joyce, Quinn Buckner, I'm Gus Johnson, so long from Atlanta. Angel. Next up, it's Dave's World on CBS, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, and Walker, Texas Ranger. Tomorrow on CBS, please join us at on the CBS Sports Show at, uh, well, 12 noon Eastern time for Alpine World Cup skiing. Alberto Tomba will be along the ski for us, and we hope you'll join us for that. At 1.30, it's the Boost Naismith Award Show as the top players and coaches in men's and women's college basketball will be honored. Follow at 2 o'clock by the road to the Final Four show as we get you ready for all the latest tournament news and uh, talk about the games with Mike Krzyzewski and George Raveling. Then the games at 2.40, Syracuse and Kansas, a 4-2 game out west. And then in the southeast, the big guys, Mississippi State and Cincinnati, and what a battle that'll be. And then on Monday, April 1st, no fooling, road to glory, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and uh, then we'll have the national championship game on Monday night here on... CBS. Well, that's March 21st, by the way. I'm already looking ahead to the championship game. That's the 25th. All right, Georgetown and UMass today, the final 86 to 62. And let's go back out to Atlanta and Gus and Quinn. And thank you very much, Pat. Right now, John Calipari and the winners in the East, the Minutemen from UMass. Good feeling for you. Kids played so hard. You know, I, I think you talk about defense today. They knew that's what it would take and great rebounding and we had foul trouble, but guys responded. I'm just proud. I'm just happy to be the coach of this team and, and they, they're special. They're special and unique. I can tell you that. I got it. Come here. Tell me something. You had the chore, Carmelo Travieso, you had the chore of guarding Allen Iverson. What did you try to make him do? I have not seen defense like that in a very long time. Just make it real hard for him. I think about pride fella. in my defense. We all do. We helped each other out. It wasn't just me. The whole team came in and helped me out, and I just made the, hard, the game real hard for him. All right, well, let's go over here and see what the big fella has to say. Gus, you got Marcus. Well, Marcus, what he did. last year you guys came up a little short against Oklahoma State, didn't advance to the Final Four, but just looking at the way you guys came out in this particular ball game, uh, you could tell that you were determined to get to New Jersey. Oh, yeah, that was our goal uh, all year. Um, last year our goal was to get to the Final Four. This year that was our goal to win it all. You know, guys played great today. Carmelo locked up Iverson in the second half, and it was a team win. Let me, come here, I, n I need to talk to Eggers. Tell me, how do you two get on it together? I mean, you're, you guys are on the same page. Talk to me real quick. We try to help each other on defense and offense. And um, Carmelo did a great job of pushing the ball. And I was just trying to help him, help him, um, him and the other, the other guys. And you guys, you're going, you got Kentucky. You ready for that show? Yeah. Yeah, we've been in one time. We're looking forward to being in the All right, thank you very much. Well, here are the winners. They're fired up. And uh, they're headed to New Jersey to take on Kentucky. Let's go back to Pat O'Brien, who's standing by in New York City. All right, Gus, Quinn, congratulations to them. Two number one seeds playing. Uh, it, it doesn't happen that often. And uh, I was so impressed with UMass's team defense, Pat. They have great team hands. 
they get their hands on everything and they help each other out magnificently. George, really a clinic by both Kentucky and UMass today. No question about it, but Pat, in my mind, UMass has clearly established themselves as the team to beat in this tournament. In the field of 64, I don't believe any team has exhibited the poise that the Minutemen have exhibited. All right, so two number one seeds will play, and uh, one of the brackets in the final four will be back here in a moment. Stay with us. Thank you.